squared project 1b and I'm on page 141. This is activity 1.17. It says start Word and then click open other documents. Well, I've already gone past that opening screen, so I'm going to go to my file tab here and choose open. And I want to go to my computer. We're putting all of these on our desktop. And uh, it's on my recent folders list here because I just did 1A. So let's go here to that folder. And there should be a file called um, W01B Programs. W01B Programs. There it is. Let's open it up. And the first thing we're going to do after the file opens is we're going to save it with our first name and last name attached to the front of it. And if it comes up in protected view, I always click on enable editing here. And that should go away. There we go. And I said the first thing we're going to do is going to save it with a new name. So we'll go to our file tab here and choose save as. And I want to go back to the current folder, but I want to rename it. So the name is already selected here, so I can just type on top of it. And last name, first name, one, let's do a capital B there, uh, programs. Okay, and the first thing we do is change the margins. That's part of our page layout. So we'll go to the page layout tab here and margins. And um, we're going to do custom. Most of the time you don't need to do that. Uh, they've got some default options here that uh, you'll probably use most of the time. Uh, normal is what I use most of the time here. If I need to squeeze a little more stuff on the page, uh, you can choose narrow or moderate. But let's go to custom margins down here. And um, in the dialog box, what we want to do is we want to select the value in the left box. And did that not come up? Let's try that again. Whoops. Uh, margins. Custom margins. Okay, there we go. And uh, the left. I want one, so just select it and type a one on top of it. You can also tab through these boxes if you want to. And um, I want to go to the right box and put a one. And uh, this should look pretty much like the bottom of page 141 now. And it does. So we'll go to page 142. Um, click OK. And you see the margins jump a little bit. I've got one inch here and one inch over here. And actually, if I look at the top and the bottom here, it looks like the I've got one inch margins all around, which we could have done by just selecting normal. That's what the normal is, one inch all around. OK. Um, and again, uh, we want to make sure that our hide show button is pushed in. And we also want to make sure that our, view, our, our uh, rulers are visible. And if yours is not visible, go to the View tab here and turn the checkbox on. And I want to go to the bottom of page 1 and the top of page 2. And uh, so right here. And it says the page edges display and the page number and total number of pages display on the left side of the status bar. That would be down here. This is the status bar, page 1 of 2. And near the bottom edge of page 1, point anywhere in the bottom margin area. Um, right click and click edit footer. So the margin area would be down here below uh, the white and in the gray somewhere. Uh, also outside of the left margin here, so somewhere right in here would work. Let's right click and choose edit footer. You could also double click there and that usually works, but sometimes uh, you have to try it more than once. And what we want is we're always going to put our file name here. So that's going to be under the header and footer tools. And it is part of our document information. And it is the file name. And uh, 
basically the only reason for doing that, I think, in this book is so if you do hard copies, you can identify your copy from somebody else's when you print it out. And it says double click any place in the document. You can also just close the header and footer tools. Uh, either way, we'll get you back in the document. The rest of the document turns black now and the footer turns gray to emphasize uh, where we are. And uh, we want to save our document. And now we're going on to activity 1.18, which has to do with text alignment. And there's a figure 1.27 there, which is worth looking at. These are the alignment buttons, and uh, I use these a lot, so I know the, the uh, shortcut keys. It's Control L for left, Control R for right, Control J for justified, and Control E for center, because Control C is already used for copy, and something is centered if it has equal margins, so that's a good way to remember it. And I want to go to the middle of page two. Oh, here's another little useful thing. Um, if you would rather not see all of this blank space between pages, if you get here between the two pages and double click, um, it basically collapses those top and bottom margins for you. If you want to get them back again, just double click on the line in between the pages. Okay, um, so the text is justified, which means it's got smooth margins on both sides. And I want to do Control A to select all the document. And that's not only page two, it's everything here except for the header and footer. And I want to choose a line left, which is this button right here. We're on the home tab in the paragraph group. That's a paragraph formatting command. And uh, now everything is a line left. And, and then I want to do control home to move to the top of the document. And I want to select the first paragraph here and the easy way to do that is just moving the margin until you get the white arrow pointing at the one o'clock and uh, it says on the mini toolbar uh, in the font size box we want 40 so this mini toolbar pops up when you select things and uh, it can save you a little bit of time and 40 is not there so we're gonna have to type it and hit enter and it'll apply to the text that we've selected uh, select the second paragraph internship guide and uh, on the main toolbar, we want font size 26, and that one is on the list, so we can just select it. And then I want to the point to the left of the first paragraph and drag down to select the first two paragraphs. And so I just want to do select both of those. And uh, I want to center them both. You can either do a control E or just click up here. And near the top of page one, locate the first bold heading, the internship program. And point next to it to select the text. And um, with that selected, scroll to the bottom of page one and locate this requirements. And I want to hold the control key down and click so I can select. This is a non-adjacent selection. This works a lot in the Windows. Hold the control key down and click to select something that's not right next to it. And then we want, looks like there's one more, introduction to upcoming internships. Control click on that. And because I control clicked, I'm just going to scroll back up here. And you can see that all three of them are selected. And I want to center those, so I can click on the center button or do a control E. And all three of those got centered for me. And we're going to save that, and that takes us to the end of activity 1.18. So now we're at the bottom of page 143 on activity 1.19. And uh, we're going to do some line spacing. And I want to do a control home to go to the top of the document. And press control A to select everything. And with all the text selected, uh, we want to double, or it is double space. We're going to check on here, and you see double spacing. And um, we want one and a half spacing, 1.5 here. By the way, if you want single spacing, uh, I like the way it does a live preview here. This is what single spacing looks like. And uh, Word has this other option there called 1.15. So it's just a little bit more than single spacing. It's uh, quite a ways from one and a half or, or double spacing. Uh, but 
I actually like that a lot better for stuff that's basically supposed to be single spaced. Uh, it puts just a little bit of extra space and it makes it more readable. What we want here is one and a half spacing. And now we're going to save the document again. And now we're on to activity 1.20 on the top of page 145. I want to click anywhere in the paragraph that begins Sturgeon Point Productions. That's this paragraph right here. And on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, click the Dialog Box Launcher. This thing here that's almost invisible uh, is actually a button called the Dialog Box Launcher. It, if you click on it, guess what it does? It launches a dialog box. Um, under um, Indentation here, so it's on the Indents and Spacing tab. There's a group called Indentation, this group right here. And click the special arrow, which is right here. And I want first line to be indented by half an inch, and that's the default. And click on OK. And now that line is indented by half an inch. And here's what actually happened. This little marker up here is what controls the indentation of the first line. And so if I move that in half an inch, the first line will be indented half an inch. This little marker over here controls the rest of the uh, lines in the paragraph. Uh, now we want to be in the paragraph that begins with as an intern. And I want to drag the marker. You got to click on the top marker. Uh, if you click on the bottom marker, the bottom marker will move. Um, and now what I want to do that to, uh, let me see, here's a partial right down here. I want to indent that the same way. And I want to save my document. And that is probably the end of activity 120. And now we're on page 146, activity 1.21. And I want to do a control A here. And on the page layout tab, in the paragraph group under spacing, there is a before and after. And uh, this will put extra spaces in between your paragraphs without having to hit the enter key. This is really the way you should do it if you want uh, gaps between paragraphs that are bigger than the space between the lines in the paragraph. And I want to change the after to six points. Okay. And now, if you drag your mouse over this, drag the mouse over the top line here, and you'll see that there's just a little bit of gray on top. There's a little more on the bottom because we're doing one and a half spacing. Now, go to the bottom line here, though, and look how much bigger the space after is because we just added six points on. And a point is 1 72nd of an inch. So if we added six on that, that would be 1 12th of an inch. So we got an extra 12th of an inch gap between paragraphs. And now we want to do a control home and go to the top of our document and near the top of page one select the subheading the internship program which is this one right here select it and drag your mouse over you go over here and click on the white arrow and it says make sure you include the paragraph mark at the end and um, scroll down holding control and then select the subheadings requirements and that's those are the same two we did before those will be easy to find so control click on this one and scroll down a little further and control click on this one so we're going to format them all the same way and uh, now I'm on number four on page 146 with all the three subheadings selected in the paragraph group which is right here under spacing which is right here uh, click the before up Spin uh, spin box arrow two times to get 12 spaces or 12 points before each one of those. So that puts a little gap between the different sections of the document. And uh, it says it should look like figure 1.35 on the bottom of page 146. And uh, it looks like it does. And we're going to save it. And that's the end of activity 1.21. And that's about 15 minutes worth of recording, so we're going to save this and we'll continue with a new video.